It is sheer madness, and you're in the middle of it. A massive battle, chaos all around you. Swords swinging, battle axes coming down, people screaming, dying, men crying. People that you know are falling. You're surrounded by them all, but you have your sword in hand and your shield to protect you. And then the worst thing happens that can happen. You lose your sword. You lose it, it's knocked from your hand, somehow lost in the battle. Because of the battle, you can't reach down to grab it. You can't retrieve it. You can't retrieve another weapon for whatever reason. And notwithstanding the sword's monetary value, which would likely be high, you've lost something that you really need at this point. And that's where you are, shield in hand, surrounded by madness. Hello, my name is Matt, and it's a privilege to be here with you today and talk to you about shields and how you could use them in battle. When we talk about shields, we're almost always talking about them as it relates to their defensive function. But in fact, shields are quite useful as weapons of war. What I want you to consider today is given the scenario that I've just outlined, as contrived as you might find it to be, having no additional sidearm, no ability to obtain another sword or other weapon, how would you fare in battle with simply a shield? Would you survive? Would your ability to fight be greatly diminished? Or would things be more or less the same? How could you use this shield to survive and to fight? Let's talk about those things. First, we want to talk about the shield and its construction and its use. In the 19th century or thereabouts, Victorian people gave this shield the name the heater shield. And the reason is because it resembled a an iron, you know, so you, you'd iron your clothes and it had this shape. This is the this is what the shape sort of looked like, and so they called it the heater shield. But really, this is just the shield that was used between 1150 and 1350. Personal preference, these are my favorite types of shields. Um, and I, it's probably because of when they were used. You know, as plate armor developed and plate covered a person's whole body, shields became an unnecessary encumbrance. So think about it this way, plate armor is covering the person from head to toe and you have a wooden shield which doesn't provide any additional protection that the plate's not already providing. So it's basically like a redundancy. So eventually it did disappear from the battlefield, but of course it still had its place in tournaments. So let's think about the way it's strapped. A number of different configurations can be seen with the way it's strapped, but basically you had uh, three main components. You have the pad protecting the arm against anything incoming and uh, then you have these smaller straps for your arm. And sometimes you'd have two at the top crisscrossed and one at the bottom. These would often be adjustable straps and then you have this longer strap which can be thrown over the shoulder or over the neck and this strap is I believe called a gidge or a gige. Um, gidge? Gage, goach. I think I got it. One of those. <laughs> this is the this is the shoulder strap. Got the shield back there, nice and snug, completely protecting my back from my bottom all the way up to my shoulders. Now we have been hearing a lot of YouTubers in the sword community talk about things that should be on your back. Is there anything that looks better than a shield on the back? I mean, shield scabbard. Shield scabbard? I, I'm very skeptical that that could be accomplished. So let's go back to our scenario. You're in battle, you're surrounded by enemies, and you've lost your sword, your primary and only weapon. And now you have your shield as your only weapon or piece of defense. If you're wearing mail head to toe or wherever you're hit, and a slashing blow comes in and strikes you, it'll just slide right off. Basically, unless we're talking about a fantasy movie, you're going to be pretty safe wearing that mail. And that's the purpose. It provides protection against a slashing blow, and it's also going to provide quite a bit of protection against a thrust. Most likely, your rings are going to hold up to something like a thrust or a slash. What you'd have to be worried about, besides arrows probably, is a crushing blow. Blunt force trauma that just strikes with a ton of force from a hammer or from something else that hits you really hard, like a shield. Depending on how skilled you are, there are at least two parts of this shield that I would find to be pretty useful in battle. The front here, it's rigid, it's hard, it's rounded, it's going to provide 
some force when you use it to strike into someone, right? And you could use that against a person who's wearing male only. If you could deliver a, a blow with this front part to the face, right? <laughs> Depending on how you hold this, and that's probably where the skill comes in. Can you hold this tight enough to not lose it? Of course, you don't want to get your fingers crushed, so you probably would use, let's see, maybe use it like this, sort of punching with this hand and sort of a blocking motion here with this arm. Ah, this, ah. And you know, you could swing that around quite, quite well, depending on your agility and uh, physicality. Ah, that probably would provide quite a lot of force. It sort of knocks somebody down, knocks somebody off balance. You know, depending on where you hit them, that really will determine what kind of damage you could do. Or maybe even more useful than the front of this would be this sharp edge here. Now it's obviously not as sharp as a sword or a knife or a dagger or something like that, but it's pointed so it delivers more, more pressure over a smaller surface area. The pressure equals force divided by area. So you decrease that surface area, you're going to increase that pressure. If there was some way to sort of gauge that, it would make a good, uh, might make a good test. I'm not sure what to gauge it, because you'd have to use sort of semi-hard targets. And how can you measure the damage? It doesn't cut like a sword, so you're not going to have bottles that you can just see that you slice right through. You'd have to have something else that you can see the damage that you're doing. I'll have to think about that. But if you got hit with that edge down there, that really hurts. And depending on where it's placed, you know, mail didn't really cover the whole face. So depending on how well that blow was aimed, ugh, ow, ow. So that's mainly what I wanted to talk to you about today. Just touch on the fact that shields are so useful and in ways that we don't really even talk about too much. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want. As always, I appreciate you watching and taking time out of your schedule to spend some time with me. Your comments and likes and shares are appreciated too. Talk to you soon. Be well, my friends.